Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create a countdown timer using geometry nodes. But not just any countdown timer. This one will keep accurate count of the hours, minutes, and seconds and have the proper padding for the numbers. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. To get started, we're going to take a look at what we actually want to accomplish. So I'm going to create a text object that we can dissect. We're going to want our timer to be in hours, minutes, and seconds. Since our smallest unit of time is going to be seconds, that's the base we're going to be working with. So we'll take our amount of seconds that we currently have and first figure out how many hours are in those amount of seconds. We'll then remove those from the total and do the same for minutes. And then whatever's left will be our seconds. So that's the general approach we're going to take. From a new scene, we'll go ahead and go into geometry nodes and add a new tree. For the sake of this video, we're going to base this off the actual scene time. So we'll use an input scene time node. We'll want to take the amount of seconds, convert that to a string, and then convert that to curves. So we can pull out a value to string node, a string to curves node, and then plug that into our output. If we play our animation, we see that we get the amount of seconds that have passed. However, if we turn up the number of decimals, we can see that we are getting fractional seconds here. And for the sake of this tutorial, we aren't really interested in fractional seconds. So we're going to want to go ahead and round the seconds down. To do that, we'll use a math node and set it to the floor setting. So now, when the seconds are between 0 and 1, it will read 0. The next thing we're going to want is this to be a count down, not a count up. So we need to decide what our starting value is going to be. And then we can subtract the number of seconds that have passed from that starting value. So I'll duplicate this math node and set it to subtract. I'll connect the first value to our input. From the end panel group menu, I'll change this input to an integer. That way we can only enter whole numbers here. Then we want to subtract the amount of seconds that have passed from that number. Then we'll take that result and send it out to our string. So if I set this now to 10, at frame 1, we're going to be at 10 seconds. Once we reach enough frames to have had a second elapse, this will then read 9. Let's set this down to 2 and let this run again. Now we've reached a problem where we're actually going into the negative. So we'll want to set a condition where if it reaches 0, it's going to stop. So if we take our final number and compare it and say it's less than zero, we want to do a switch statement. We'll set this to float and say, and we'll say if it's true that our calculated time is less than zero, we just want to output zero. Otherwise, we want to output our calculated time. So now if I run this from two, once we reach zero, no more time will pass. I'll reset my decimals to zero and now we can have any arbitrary number of seconds and let those run down. Now that we have this, we need to separate this out into hours, minutes, and seconds. To keep this cleaned up, I'm going to take these nodes and group them together. And I'm going to call this node group calculated time. Now we can worry about splitting this out. The first thing we'll do is divide the amount of seconds we have by the number of seconds in an hour. Because Blender's inputs can take expressions, we can figure this out really quickly if we don't know it off the top of our head. We have 60 seconds in a minute times 60 minutes in an hour. So 3600 is the number of seconds in an hour. So now, if this is less than 3600, the result will be a decimal number between 0 and 1. So if we take the floor of that, this will be the number of hours that have passed. So until we get to 3600, this number will be 0. Let's go ahead and leave that right there. Next, we'll want to calculate our number of minutes. However, we don't want to calculate our number of minutes from the original calculated time. We want to calculate it 
from whatever's left over after we get rid of the hours. So if we take our number of hours and multiply it by the number of seconds in an hour, this will give us the number of seconds to remove from our original calculated time. So I can simply subtract that number from our original calculated time. This output will now be the number of remaining seconds after we get rid of the hours. So now let's think about minutes. If we take that amount and divide it by the number of seconds in a minute, which of course is 60, and then we floor that amount, that will give us the number of whole minutes that remain in those seconds. We can plug that into a value to string, and then we'll use a join strings node and connect these two numbers and we'll put a colon in between them. Now just like with the hours, we'll want to remove those whole minutes from our total. Of course we're not going to remove those from the original calculated, we're going to remove those from the number of seconds that were left after we got rid of the hours. So we'll multiply those number of minutes times 60, that will give us the number of seconds to remove from the time after we removed the hours. So we'll simply take that time and subtract our minute seconds. This will give us the number of seconds that remain after we've removed the hours and the minutes. So I can connect this in as well. So here at frame one, with a value of 155, we see we have two minutes and 35 seconds left, which is 120 seconds for the two minutes plus 35 seconds equals 155 seconds. Now, of course, you're probably already noticing that the formatting isn't quite right. We always want to have two digits for the second and two digits for the minute and possibly two digits for the hour, although we might only want to have the number of digits we need here for the hour. So let's see how we can pad these numbers with zeros to the front of them so that they look correct. Let's look at our minutes. If we take our string and do a join strings and then take a string input, put the number zero in it and connect that before the value. Now this looks correct. However, let me increase this value. You can see once I get to two digits, I now actually have three, which is not what we're looking for. So really we only ever want the last two digits of this particular string. We can use the slice string node to get that. This takes a position in our string and a length. Well, we know the length we want is two. We want two digits from our string. However, we need to figure out what position we need to start at. Well, if we take this number, the position is always gonna be however many digits this number is minus two. So from here, we can use the string length node. So when this is three digits, this is going to be three. So if we subtract two from three, we get one. And so our starting position will be one. And that's what we want. So I'll add a math node, set it to subtract, and subtract two, and plug this into the position. So since this string when I join the value to a zero is always going to be at least two digits, then my starting position will be at least zero and go for two. When it's three, my starting position will be one and I'll go for two. So this is always gonna give me the last two digits of the string coming out of here. So I'm gonna use this same method for the seconds. So now I have two digits for the seconds and two digits for the minutes. Of course, if I want two digits for the hours, I can do that as well. So now if I ramp this up, you'll see I can get the times that I'm looking for. Now I would suggest taking all of these nodes, not including the string to curves or my group input and grouping those together and we could call this node something like countdown. This will output a string that we can do whatever we want with. So 
So there it is. Of course, whatever you do with it from here is completely up to you. If you're interested in these source files, they'll be available on my Patreon. Speaking of my Patreon, I want to give a shout out to all my supporters. Your continued support has been a real inspiration to help me keep doing more of these tutorials for you. If you're interested in joining, there's a link in the description. As always, I hope this tutorial was interesting and I hope you got something out of it. So until next time, I'll catch you later.